we'll come back. But let me just press you on this question that you, um, you know, commenting about Ivan Mohoro. So yes, I mean, there is equality before the law. There are all sorts of, you know, changes, dramatic. But I couldn't help feeling, as I've watched some of this Oscar Pistorius case, what a marked difference there is between that case when you're a high profile person with lots of money and the vast majority of people who come before our criminal justice system, poorly defended, no resources, very different. Well, there's been, <coughs> there's been a lot of, um, I can't say uh, debate, but there is a, a lot of people have just talked about equality in a sort of bland way. And I think because of the history of where we come from, equality has always been looked at in terms of equality of opportunity between black and white people. Class has never really been at the center of uh, our political outlook, uh, let alone our jurisprudence. And I think Stuart probably was alluding to that when he says there have been uh, a few cases which have been agitating for socioeconomic rights. Uh, and, and, and I think there, there are going to be a lot more of those cases coming up uh, if there will be a number of people who will be prepared to take those cases. Uh, for example, I mean, the, the most recent case was this um, informal, set, uh, I mean, informal traders uh, where the JMPD uh, simply moved a number of informal traders <coughs> from the street without discriminate, discriminate whether who, who, those who were being removed from the streets who had, had rights to be there or not. I mean, the fact that it went to the Constitutional Court and the process was facilitated to get it are you there right. and it won, is, okay. is an indication. So let me ask you then, in your view, what would you think is the biggest disappointment? Because you can't <laughs> tell me we've reached utopia. <laughs> We haven't uh, reached utopia. Yeah. Um, By a long shot. The disappointment is that we have a constitution uh, that um, uh, provides uh, socioeconomic rights, as the other speakers have indicated. And in many instances, lawyers and um, litigants believe that they must look to the court for the achievement of oh. those socioeconomic rights when actually this is a fundamentally a role that must be played by the state to ensure that those socioeconomic rights are achieved. So it's in a some, you're saying it's a failure of politics. Let's, let's it's a failure bluntly. of politics yeah. and policy development around the, equal, uh, the achievement of those, uh, those rights, whether it's equality, which should be substantive equality, whether it's the right to... Um, to housing, uh, which the Constitution enjoins the state to take measures. Although I suspect if a government person was here, they'd be saying they'd done a, an enormous amount. I mean, I'm not no, saying that, uh, uh, you, uh, that's what they would say, wouldn't they? That's, that's what they would say. But you're, not, you're saying that's not entirely so. That's not entirely so. And if we have to balance, because the Constitution is not an instrument for utilization okay. through the judiciary. It's, a, it's an instrument through which government must achieve those rights that are enshrined. And the, the courts are merely there to hold government accountable well, in you, those regards. Well, that's the point. I mean, uh, are we... a perfect setup. Go Sorry? ahead, ask, ask the question. What is it? No, the question, not a perfect setup. The question no, no, is no. this. Are courts being asked to shoulder too much of a burden, to do too much heavy lifting. I, th I think... Because, I, in a way, they're being asked to supplement, maybe not even supplement, but override what, what Lindy's, I think, saying, correct me if I'm wrong, where the political system fails. I know okay. you will have been wrong. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. think, I think there are a couple of answers yeah. to that question. Yeah. One, I think, yes. I think academics and perhaps those of us in the legal profession, because we, have, we work with the Constitution, fall in love with it, and therefore expect the bodies responsible for enforcing it to do, to work magic. Uh, courts can't do that. 
uh, they have neither guns nor butter, right? They don't have budgets. Um, the best they can do is hold government accountable, but as you said. They, yeah. And go ahead. You want no, to no, ask? No, no. I, what I want to ask something. you is when they have to do this in circumstances where the political process has failed. Well, I'm not there sure. doesn't that, that see, jeopardize wanna, them to I, I want to step in there. Yeah. Um, because there's this notion that as of 90, 1994, you know, on April 26, there was one South Africa where you flip a switch and you have a new one. The same structures, right? You're a critical legal theorist, Dennis. Same economic structures. Uh, 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 <laughs> same structures that existed 20 years ago mm. remain largely in place. I would argue that we have the policies there. They've been there for a long time. And housing, we've delivered 2.2 million units of housing. We've got a backlog of roughly the same amount. But that's, that's real Did delivery. You, yeah. Secondly, um, we had an emptying out of, of the state bureaucracy. I can't un overestimate how important it is for the implementation of policy to have a sufficiently num large well, number of Well, you're talking about agents. the challenges that, that, that faced the new government well, I coming mean, in. That's you, what you're talking about. There was something suggested here that the, that the state, our political actors, whether it's parliament or the executive, have failed no, in on. terms of policy well, we know, or execution. Sorry, we know that there are a huge amount of delivery protests. They go up exponentially. People they are dissatisfied. 6,000 6, a year. Yes, and they're going up, right? Right. They are. So the question is why? The answer is something's not happening. Are well, you not suggesting seriously that there aren't certain major delivery problems? This, uh, of course there's certain. So then there he's are, right. Well, no, there's a difference between failure and they need to build structures. Uh, what do you look, mean by that? I don't understand that. Um, okay, let me take a... <laughs> In words of one syllable, what do you mean? What I mean is, <laughs> we have budgets. Yes. Money is, uh, for education, for example, yeah. large, it's, the biggest, it's the biggest part of our spend. Yes. Right? But you have to have people in place mm -hmm. to actually deliver the textbooks to the classroom. I accept that, sir. Um, and that's it's, not the court's problem. It's yes. not the court's that's problem. That's what he's saying. Mm. And unfortunately, let's say it's a historical problem. There was an emptying out. There were golden handshakes. And, and 20 years we, later, we can still use that when people are denied. I think that's a political problem. It's not the court's problem. I agree. I agree, ah. that, the, I agree that the politi political actors have to turn their attention more towards building an adequate bureaucracy. Right. With that concession, I think I can take a break and then we'll move forward. All right. <laughs> ENCA.com.